Geometric sequences, and this goes with uh, chapter 15, lesson one in your text. Oop. Your EQ, how are the terms of a geometric sequence related? And our learning goal today is I can apply a rule for a sequence to find terms of a sequence. So we're going to be able to do that. This is your first interactive slide. Okay, and it's just a little bit of a review. So right here on the left, we have a table of values with term numbers one through five and then we have the terms three five seven nine and eleven and so if I take these term numbers um, they're actually an arithmetic sequence okay so this is some review here three five seven and we learned what the common difference is you can find it in an arithmetic sequence so I want you to type what you think the common difference is of the arithmetic sequence here three five seven nine eleven three five seven dot 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 okay so the geometric one will come next but right now what is the common difference of this arithmetic sequence so I'm going to give you a couple minutes to answer this question Alexa play <laughs> Don't show up, don't come out, don't stop caring, tell me no, walk away, you know how, don't stop caring, tell me now. Alexa, pause. Okay, so I have uh, 11 responses. Thank you to the 11 of you that responded to this interactive slide. Um, there's four of you that are in the Pear Deck that haven't chosen response yet. Now I just need three more responses. There's 20 of us in the meet that are students, so there's still five more of you in the meet that need to join the Pear Deck. Okay, the, the link is in your week at a glance. You can also just use the link that is in the chat. You just joined, I'll put it in the chat again. Okay, but you need to join. So let's see what you came up with. The common difference. Um, so most of you said two. There was a couple people that said something different. Now, two is correct. Two is the common difference. And the way you find the common difference is you just subtract any two consecutive terms. So like 11 minus nine is two, that's the common difference. Or five minus three is two, that's the common difference. Another way to think about it is, what am I adding each time in the sequence to get from three to five to seven? I'm adding two, so that's why the common difference is two. So that's an arithmetic sequence. And now we're gonna learn about geometric sequences, okay? 
Um, the ratio of successive terms is constant in a geometric sequence, which means that we have a common ratio. So instead of a common difference, we have a common ratio. Uh, the ratio of successive terms written as R, this can be found by dividing a term by the previous term or asking yourself, what are you multiplying by to get to the next term? So with the common difference in an arithmetic sequence, we would just take two terms that are next to each other and subtract to find it. Whereas here, we take two terms that are next to each other and we basically divide, okay? Um, or you could think about it as asking, what are you multiplying by to get to the next term? So now that I've kind of shared that with you, we're gonna look at this geometric side, these sequences here, where you have the term numbers in the table, one through five, and then the terms that are produced in the sequence are three, six, 12, 24, 48. And your question is, what is the common ratio of the geometric sequence? We just looked at the last slide that told us the common ratio is what you get when you divide a term by the term before it. Or, what are you multiplying by to move forward in the sequence? You could think of it two different ways, okay? And this is just a number. So, uh, again, I'm gonna give you a couple minutes to respond to this. Alexa, play. I get up, I get down, and I'm jumping around. I go around the some rock, feel so comfortable now. When I head over around, but I'm thinking it's time to go. So I got in my car, and I crossed in the crowd, cooking hot in my fridge, till I'm not feeling right. Then I hell of a rhyme, but I'm thinking it's time to go. Alexa, pause. Okay, so, um, <laughs> yeah, so I, in the chat, I was kind of <laughs> saying how YouTube's been getting kind of mad at me. They're sending me these emails about, you know, this is copyrighted, you can't do this, and your video will not play in these countries. It's like, okay, you can't play in Iran or Syria anymore. And just like random countries like all over the world because I always make everything that I do public. So, you know, you never know. There could be somebody somewhere who wants to learn about this stuff. If I could help them out, awesome. Um, but anyhow, so for this question here, I got eight of you to respond. That makes me sad. Come on, guys. You just got to pick a number, all right? Even if you're wrong, it's okay. We're learning. So just pick something. There's 24 students in um, – our Google Meet, I have 17 of you in the Pear Deck. 
Okay, so if you're one of the students that haven't joined or you're one of the students that are not responding, that's going to get marked in Aries today. Okay, that goes into your records. It gets marked that you're being non-responsive. I don't want to have to do that. That's more work for me, and you're not learning, so that's not good. All right, let's see. Uh, so the majority of our choices are down here. And does it say that people are saying three the most? I think that's what it's trying to show me here. It's kind of hard to tell with this. Can I zoom? Oh, yeah, I can. All right, so we have some ones, twos, and mostly threes. Um, it's two, okay? Reason it's two is that if I take any two consecutive terms, like 24 and 48, and I divide 48 by 24, I get two. If I take two consecutive terms, like 12 and six, and I divide 12 divided by six, I get two. Or if I ask myself, how do I move forward in this sequence? How do I get from three to six? What would I multiply by? I'm multiplying by two to get from six to 12. I multiply by two. So with arithmetic sequences, you're thinking, what do you add each time? Whereas in a geometric sequence, you're thinking, what do you multiply each time? Okay, that's the big difference. Arithmetic sequences have the common difference. Geometric sequences have the common ratio, right? Those terms are unique to those types of sequences. Okay, so here it says find the common ratio R for each geometric sequence and use R to find the next three terms. Okay, so I'm also going to open up one of these where I could just write on it with you guys. So we'll do this one kind of together. Um. Okay, so here's the slide that everyone's on right now. And um, we are looking at highlighter here. We're looking at um, geometric sequences okay geometric sequences have a common ratio and that's what the r is we're being asked to find what the r is on both of these that is what are we multiplying by to get from one term to the next and so what you can do is think of it as picking any two terms like 81 oh that's way too big and do like 81 and the one before it, 27, and I divide, 81 divided by 27, maybe that's kind of hard to do in your head, but you know, you're allowed to open a calculator. And so if I just use this, 81 divided by 27, we get three, okay? So it's three. Now, it tells me these are geometric sequences, so it doesn't matter which two numbers I pick. I could pick nine and three, okay? As long as they're consecutive, okay, and I'm dividing the, the one in front by the one before it, every time we're gonna get three. So my common ratio is three. So all you have to do to get the next three terms is multiply by three. So this next term here, 81, times three. And if you want to use a calculator, you can. 81 times three. So my next term is 243. Geometric sequences get really large really fast or get really small really fast. Okay, and so to get your next term, you're going to do 243 times three. What is 243 times 3? Someone can type it in the chat or come off your mic. Seven hundred twenty-nine. Thank you. Awesome. 
729. Look at that. We're only on the one, two, three, four, five, sixth term. We started at three and we're already up to 729. This next term even is going to be larger. What's our next term going to be in the sequence? Yeah, Mario, you're right, 2,187. Okay, so it gets real big real fast. Okay, so that's an example of a geometric sequence that's increasing. This one's increasing because, see, we started with three, and then we're getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, when we look at this next one over here, um, this geometric sequence, we're starting with the first term. Term one is 972. Our next term is 324 then 108, and then 36. So this is a decreasing sequence. Um, but we still find out the common ratio the same way. I pick any two consecutive terms. So maybe I pick the last two, 36 and 108. And I still have to set up the ratio the same way, 36 divided by 108. Well, this is a ratio. Um, and it, it's a number that's actually smaller than one. So like if I was just to come over here and do 36 divided by 108, I get 0 0.333 forever. What fraction is this in simplest terms? You remember what fraction is the same as this decimal that's shown on my calculator? Yeah, you're right, Mauricio, it is one third. So this is equal to one third. And that's actually your common ratio, one third. And notice that because this number is smaller than one between zero and one, it means my sequence is decreasing. Whereas my common ratio over here was larger than one, so my geometric sequence was increasing. Okay? Um, doesn't matter what two numbers you pick, if you divide them, or you do like 324 divided by 972. Okay, I'm going to get the same decimal. I should, because it's a geometric sequence. It's supposed to be the same every time. Yep, so works. Okay, um, you know, if you're not sure how to do it that way, where you use the calculator and then turn it into a fraction, you can also do the thing where you look for a common GCF like between 36 and 108. You know, it's not real obvious, but you can divide 36 out of 36, and you could divide 36 out of 108, and then you would get one third. Okay, here the common GCF is actually 324 that we divide out of the top and bottom. All right, so to get our next three terms in the sequence, um, we take last term we're given, 36 and we are going to multiply by the common ratio 36 times one third and if you multiply a whole number by a fraction that's where you just turn your whole number into a fraction by putting a one in the denominator and then you can multiply your numerators and your denominators, so I get uh, 36 over 3. And if I simplify this, 36 over 3, what is 36 divided by 3? It goes in evenly. Yeah, 12, that's right. Okay, so my next term is 12. And actually, the next two terms are going to be a little bit easier. Um, what's my next term after 12 going to be? I just take 12 and I multiply by one third. So 12 times one third, which also means 12 divided by 3. Yeah, it's 4. What about the last term? Yeah? Now we don't we don't want to write out all that <laughs> because those threes go on forever. Um, so what we're going to write is actually the ratio version of that, which is just 
four thirds. Or four divided by three. Four thirds. Or you could put um, one decimal three with a little bar on top. That would also work because that's a way of representing a repeating fraction. Okay, so that's how we do these kinds. And right here, look at this. Take this in. You have to learn this. This is the explicit formula for geometric sequences. So if you are given a list of numbers and you're told, hey, this list of numbers is a geometric sequence, and then you're asked to find, well, if I continue that pattern on and I want to know the 53rd number in the sequence, this is the formula that you can use. Okay, the A sub N means the term at what number? So if I wanted the 53rd term in a sequence, this would be a 53 where the N is. It's just saying this is the 53rd term. Equals A sub 1. A sub 1 means the first term in the sequence. What is the very first number in that list of numbers? Little r, common ratio. And then N minus 1. Well, if I wanted the 53rd term, it'd be 53 minus 1 or 52. And this is an exponent. Okay, so we're going to see how this, this formula works. So here's an example. I have a sequence. I have 6, 18, 54. I'm going to find the ninth term. Okay. You know, I could just keep working this out and then figure out what is the ninth thing over here. And um, that's one way to do it. But what I'm asking you to do with this problem is to use that explicit formula. And so we want to identify the common ratio, which is little r. Okay, of the sequence. So you take any two consecutive numbers in your sequence, and they're actually showing works for both of them. So they took 18 and 6 and divided and got 3. They also took 54 and 18 and divided and got 3. So 3 is the common ratio. It's geometric because I'm getting the same ratio both times. Then we apply the explicit formula. So this is the general formula. We want to know the ninth term, so it's a sub 9, means the ninth term, equals a sub 1, that is, what is the first term in the sequence? It's 6, so we put a 6 here. And then little r is the common ratio of 3, and then n minus 1, since we want the ninth term, it's to the 9 minus 1 power, 8, 8 power. And then what you want to do is evaluate this. Um, when you have six times three to the eighth power, you gotta remember PEMDAS order, okay? You wanna make sure you deal with your exponents before you do any multiplying with six and three. So we wanna do three to the eighth power first, which is actually three times 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 three. Times three. And depending on your calculator, what it looks like, you should have some sort of a button that lets you, you know, take any number and raise it to any power. My button looks like this with the X and the little Y. So I would type in 3 as the base, and then hit this button, x to the little y, and then type 8 as my exponent, and then equals. And so what it showed me here is I did 3 to the 8th power, and it's 6,561. Okay, and I'm almost done. i got to take that number now and multiply it with 6 times 6 equals. That's your answer. So what that means is that, in this sequence, the ninth term out, the ninth number, is 39,366. Okay? We're going to do one more like this. Okay, so here we go. This time, our sequence of numbers, we start with 1. So a sub 1, the first term is 1. a sub 2 is 3 halves. a sub 3 is 9 fourths. And this pattern is going on forever. And so what we want to do is find the ninth term by not multiplying out, you know, six more times here. We are going to find what is the common ratio first. Identify the common ratio. Okay. And so we take two consecutive terms and divide. Three halves divided by one is three halves. 
Because anything divided by 1 is itself. 9 fourths divided by 3 halves, this is working with dividing fractions. If you don't remember how to divide fractions, it's where um, you actually rewrite it as a multiplication problem. So it becomes 9 fourths multiplied by the reciprocal of the denominator times 2 thirds. And then you multiply straight across and simplify. In this case, it turns out to be 3 halves as well. And so we're getting the same ratio. That means it's geometric. The ratio is 3 halves. I'm going to apply the explicit formula. So here's the general formula. And I want to know the ninth term again for some reason. So a sub 9 equals, replace a sub 1 with the first term, which is 1. Replace r with the common ratio, which is 3 halves. And then the exponent is the number n is the which term we're finding minus 1. So n is 9, 9 minus 1 is 8. And now we're going to simplify this. Um, 3 halves to the 8th power. When you raise a fraction to an exponent, um, depending on, you know, what the fraction is in here, what this ratio is, you know, sometimes you can simplify it into something else like, I could put it into decimal form, one and five tenths, or I can take this exponent and bring it into the numerator and the denominator. But just so I can do it all in the calculator and show you, I just changed it to one and five tenths because three halves is the same value. And I'm going to raise it to the eighth power. You get this number. And then multiply that by one. Anytime you multiply by one, you get the same thing back. Okay. And then if I round this, that would be my answer. So 25 decimal 629 thousandths. All right. Okay. You have one problem left. You have now a sequence of numbers. I intentionally made this one easier than the other ones. Okay. We did two of the tougher ones together. I'm going to put this on to student paced mode. So here's your sequence. 2, 6, 18. I want you to tell me what the eighth term in the sequence is. Not by multiplying out and finding out what the eighth term is. You can check your work that way, but I want you to be able to use this explicit formula. So first step, identify the common ratio. What do you get when you divide one term by the term before it? Or what are you multiplying by each time to get to the next term? And then apply the formula, which is here, and simplify it to a single value. So I'm going to give you five minutes to work on this one. Alexa, play. Started responding. It's been a minute and a half. You know, if you're not exactly sure how to do the whole thing, okay. But can you find maybe step one? Can you do that much? Can you identify the common ratio of the geometric sequence? Okay, this is also in student pace mode, which means you can go to any slide you want. All right, so you can go back to um, the examples that we did together. 
You can jump around anywhere you want to be. So you have three more minutes. Write something. That's how you get credit today. Okay, and I only have four of you that have done that so far. And it's two minutes in. Alexa, play. Oh, I understand. My first example, this person got it. So um, A sub eight, two, that's the first term of sequence. Three is the common ratio. And then eight minus one is the power, which is seven, which means they're, they're putting it to the seventh power. And this is actually correct, absolutely correct. Good job. How else did we do? Three, yes. A sub nine, two. Yep, that's the first term, A sub one, and then three, and then to the eight minus one power. So this would actually be a seven as an exponent. Um, make sure you do n minus one. So whatever term you're trying to find, and this person's finding the ninth term, so they are correct in what they wrote here, except they didn't follow the directions here to find the eighth term, which is understandable since the other two problems you're finding the ninth term, I get that. Okay, so common ratio is three. We figured it out, simplified it, they got the right answer. Okay, pretty good. So we're going to get more practice with this. Um, this first step here, identifying the common ratio, is what the delta math assignment is about today, and also identifying the common difference. So real quick, we still have three minutes. I'm going to go back to this slide here and just show you. Okay, arithmetic sequences have common differences. Okay, what are you adding each time? Whereas geometric sequences have common ratios. Okay, those terms are exclusive to each other. Common ratio is geometric. Common 
difference is arithmetic. And then when you find that number, it's what are you adding each time? And then for geometric, what are you multiplying each time? And you can use division to figure it out. You can use subtraction to figure it out. So 